just to inform all our uh, the audience today, we were running a case study contest. We had three interesting characters, uh, uh, all women in various stages of their life. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, Gajendra is going to help us understand how should they be looking at financial planning. Uh, so, so Gajendra, before that, very quickly, uh, you know, based on what Prerna said, any thoughts that any insights that you would want to share, particularly about women and uh, uh, financial planning? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think uh, uh, one particular insight which I would like to uh, talk about is uh, is the power of compounding. I think as as uh, she rightly said, many people uh, don't uh, uh, you know take it seriously when it comes to compounding. Uh, as Albert Einstein once said, uh, the power of compounding is is the greatest uh, is one of the greatest uh, mathematical discoveries ever made. You know, and he termed it as eighth uh, wonder of the world. Uh, so this is really very important. And when you start early, the kind of corpus you can build uh, is unimaginable. You know, it is going to be mammoth. Uh, uh, for you and it will take care of all of your uh, goals uh, at a later date. So we need to start early and in the, in, in the case studies we will discuss uh, some of these you know when we start uh, right away. So can we move uh, on to the case yeah. studies? Uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So uh, the first case study was about uh, Nisha. Nisha is a, is a typical 24 year old you know. Uh, if you look at, look at what she wants, what she has, uh, what she wants and what she what she wishes for are, are what a typical 24 year old uh, uh, would want from a, a city living in a metro or in a in a, in a smaller city would want. Um, so, uh, Gajendra, how should Nisha uh, start planning for her uh, finances? Uh, yeah, as you rightly said, she's uh, 24, just entered into a working life. Uh, you know, completely fresher in that sense. Uh, she's receiving she. She is just receiving a first paycheck, and she'll be really thrilled, you know. And as we can see from her uh, study, she is uh, she enjoys shopping and dinner. She has a smartphone. She likes to splurge on iPod, and you know she don't want to miss a weekend dinner. So, Legend, sorry, uh, can you be a little slightly louder, please? Okay, yeah. Which is uh, so all these goals are are of typical of uh, you know her age uh, basically, and. Uh, so if you see, if you break up her monthly income, she is currently earning 40,000 rupees, and uh, some of these goes into rent, uh, bills, food, and these are the normal expenses. Now the interesting thing is that she is able to save 16,000 rupees per month, and uh, currently she has a health insurance by her employer, which covers her two lakh rupees for individual cover. Now if you see her goals, she require, uh, uh, she wants to have a car, she wants to enjoy a vacation. And uh, obviously, she wants to plan for our marriage in the next slide, if you see. Uh, so these are uh, some of the goals. Now let's take one uh, goal each, one by one. So as you said, her savings is around 16,500 rupees per month. Uh, if you take the first uh, goal, which is uh, vacation, and the time horizon is one year. Now she would require 50,000 rupees to go for a foreign vacation, I presume. and. Uh, we don't have much time to save for this goal, so just one year. What we can do is we can put aside 4,000 rupees per month into a debt fund, which is now here shown as ultra short term fund. Now, many of uh, our uh, you know participants may not understand what is this ultra short term fund. This is a kind of a debt mutual fund, which is absolutely going to save. Uh, uh, you know, uh, considering the goal we have, because we have only one year time horizon. We can't take risk with our purpose, you know. We would definitely require 50,000 and we can't expect, we can't be short with this amount. So to do an SIP, which is systematic investment planning, set aside 4,000 rupees in a ultra short term fund and you can expect around 1.5% post tax return. Now, there's a world of difference between post tax and pre tax return when you compare investments. Uh, the other option one could say is uh, a fixed deposit of, you know, of one year. Now, the problem with uh, Fixed deposit. What may come is that if you do a less than one year fixed deposit, currently they are fetching somewhere around seven and a half percent return, and uh, the taxation also is very high there. Uh, in, in terms of fixed deposit uh, taxation, whatever uh, tax rates you fall into, you'll have to pay it tax accordingly. So if you're into thirty percent tax bracket, you have to pay thirty percent tax on the interest. Uh, you are on the fixed deposit. 
since uh, she is earning uh, 40,000, she falls into 20% tax bracket. And if she invests into a debt fund, she will be only charged, uh, she will only have to pay 10% tax after one year, which is a long-term capital gain. So for the first goal, 4,000, she will earn 7.5% tax, post tax, and will be able to meet the vacation goal in a very comfortable manner. Moving on to the second goal, which is buying a car in two years horizon, again expenditure would be around 1,40,000. This is, I think, she will be paying a down payment. You know. And again, because the horizon is shorter, we can't expect much return here. We have just taken conservative rate of around 7.5%. Again, similarly, she has to do a debt fund investment. Now, the investment may be a notch higher compared to Alta short-term fund. Alta short-term fund currently is offering around 8.5%, 9%. So if you do in a short-term fund, she can expect around 9.5% uh, to 10% return, a little better than the Alta short-term fund. Or if she is comfortable doing a fixed deposit for one year above, because one year fixed deposit is also fetching her 9.25%. Uh, you know? So even this can be an alternative. And uh, for two years, if she do, she can uh, she can get this one lakh forty thousand, one lakh fifty thousand mark, and she can comfortably buy a car in two years time horizon. The last goal which we see on the slide is, uh, is obviously marriage. Uh, time horizon is three years. Uh, she would require four lakh rupees, uh, you know, for that purpose. Now we have little flexibility here because the time horizon is really long. Uh, so we have recommended two things, you know, start an investment for eighteen months in a MIP. Now, MIP is monthly income plan, which is again a debt fund, uh, comprising around 80 to 90 percent money into debt income uh, investment, and 10 to 15 percent goes into equity to give that a little return, uh, high return, you know. Because we have three year time horizon, for the first 18 months, we can do an SIP in MIP, and then for the next 18 months, when we know that the time horizon is short, we can do an SIP into again a uh, uh, normal ultra short term fund or a short term fund. Now, second thing which you see is uh, start an SIP of 2000 rupees in a gold fund in the first year. Why we are saying because we uh, because if you see in the first goal 4000 rupees is being utilized for uh, for the vacation. After one year, this 4000 rupees she can divert for a marriage purpose and then she can increase the gold fund SIP to 6000. Gold, as you know, is an integral part of our uh, marriages. And uh, the way gold prices are going up, uh, it may be very difficult for us to buy lump sum uh, gold at the time of marriage. We don't know at what will the price at that point of time. So it's better to start accumulating gold by way of gold fund, you know. This is a great way of investment and this is very tax friendly. Uh, it offers you liquidity also. It offers you safety also. And at the time of marriage, when you have enough amount in gold, you can just liquidate your gold fund and buy and, uh, you know, whatever jewelry you want. So that way she can be easily able to plan for a marriage uh, for 4 lakh rupees. So I think uh, she's in a comfortable uh, position right now, you know, able to meet her all her goals and, you know, live life uh, the way she wants right now. Thanks, Gajal. Very interesting. And I, I just wanted to quickly tie this up with what, uh, you know, what uh, Prerna was mentioning earlier is that this ability to look at your uh, goals and then map the, uh, the tools and the instruments uh, to those goals is, is a very important connect and I can already see the transition happening with this case as well. Yeah, that's, that's very true. And just one more thing, when you start working, you know, nobody kind of advises you, you know, when I was, when I came into the workforce, nobody advised me to start saving right from day one, you know, so uh, whenever I see money lying in the savings account, I just used to splurge. Uh, that was, that was not uh, very good thinking, you know. So if she can, uh, Nisha can take care of the things, uh, Keep aside every month 16,500. I think she'll have a much better uh, control on her finances. Okay, great. Uh, you know, uh, let's move on to the next next case study. The next case study was uh, for Mira, and uh, you know, Mira is 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 in, uh, has just married. She has taken up a new profession. She is working. Um, her uh, what she currently has is she's a professional photographer. Um, uh, she she is uh, has a wellness center membership uh, has a car. Uh, what what she wants to do is she wants to understand about how to plan for investments. Uh, she wants and health insurance. Uh, she needs and health insurance. She's thinking about life insurance as well for her own self and the spouse. Um, and she aspires to have a house 
uh, put up an exhibition or a photograph exhibition of a, a photographs that she has clicked or, a, or, or you know, professional photographs that she works with to have an exhibition of that. And uh, there is definitely uh, this, this thing on the horizon she has in, in her mind to expand the family um, in, in at least a couple of years or three years. Uh, so Gajendra, how would you, Meera is again a very typical 28 to 30 year old woman in India in an urban setup, uh, how should she look at her financial plan? Yeah, I think uh, she, as we can see from her uh, investments already, she seems to be a well uh, kind of knowledge to investor. Uh, she, uh, since last four years she's been saving for PPF. Uh, for many of you who don't know what is PPF, it's basically public property fund. But in every year, you can save around one lakh rupees uh, from your from your earnings, which won't be taxable. You know, this comes under Section 80C, and currently it's offering around 8.8% return per annum uh, for next 15 years. So this is a wonderful vehicle uh, to save for your retirement. Uh, so this is what she's been doing. She's doing a very pretty smart thing. She also has taken health insurance. You know, at three lakh rupees family floater, which is uh, very. Uh, Good at this stage in the sense, three lakh amount is, is absolutely fine, and she has also done fifty thousand rupees investment in taxable funds, which means she is a seasoned investor. You know, she knows about uh, various options. Because she is young, she can take some amount of risk, and that is what she has done. You know, by investing into a tax saving fund. Now, if you see her monthly income is around fifty five thousand, which has a breakup, as you can see on the screen, and she is able to save twenty five thousand rupees per month, which is which is a good number. And as you can see, she wants to have a house, she wants to uh, have her own exhibition of photography in a few time, and she wants to start her family also. So if you go to the next slide, which is which, uh, mentions the goals in detail, the first thing is, time, uh, is uh, term insurance. She's married, she plans to start a family. Uh, now, many times, we, many women ignore you know, uh, this insurance part of it. Uh, insurance is very much useful, particularly for the people who are working, you know, who, who are breadwinner of the family, who are earning uh, for the family, and she is now earning a sizable amount, which is, you know, um, which is around 55,000 per month. Now, she needs to first have a insurance, which is term insurance. It's the most, best, it's the best form of insurance in the sense it's very cheap. Uh, because she has an economic value, she needs to go for a uh, 50 lakh rupees term insurance. Now, you would be asking why 50 lakhs? Normally, the thumb rule says that you should have around 9 to 10 times covered of your annual income, you know. So, 50,000 is, if her annual income is around 55,000, so she should roughly at least have 50 lakhs of some assured, uh, some assurance from term plan. Uh, the premium for which it will be very uh, cheap, you know, it's 6,000. It just, it just ranges from 6,000 to 10,000. And one another advantage which many women don't know and they get, many insurance companies offer a better rate for the women because simply because of the fact that they're more health conscious, they live more longer. So there you have an advantage why the term insurance has been as possible because we, there's no certainty about death, you know. So that is very important. Once you have the term insurance in place, you will be absolutely protected, you know. And the next goal is house, buying a house in five-year horizon, for which you would require 10 lakh rupees. Five years is a decent time period, you know, and we can kind of take some kind of risk into investment. So rather than saving this amount in a fixed deposit, which post-tax will earn only around 6 to 7 percent, she's better off investing into a mutual fund. Again, just for many investors, you know, I want to tell that mutual fund is not an asset class, you know, it's just a vehicle to invest in various kind of asset classes. It's, it's the only product which offers you investment right from one day uh, requirement to lifetime, you know, if you have a one day goal, there is an investment, if there is a two year goal, there is an investment for you, if there is a five year goal, there is an investment for you, and if there is a 25 year goal, there is a different investment for you. So in this case, if there is a five year, we go to a called something called hybrid mutual fund, which comprises 65% of equity and roughly 35% in debt. The advantage here is it's a tax-free, you know, after one year the capital gain is tax-free. So whatever income you've earned, it's all tax-free to you, unlike uh, the MITs or the debt funds which I talked about. So that makes great sense. In five years, you can 
on a conservative uh, note, you can expect easily 10% return. She can then meet her housing requirement goal. And then she wants to fulfill her uh, goal of, you know, starting her own exhibition, which is an amazing uh, step, you know, because she's an avid photographer. Amount she will require is somewhere between two, two and a half lakhs to five lakh rupees, and time horizon is two years. Now, because the time horizon is less, you know, it's just two years time, uh, she can't play much around with investments. And again, we have a very limited option in terms of, uh, you know, putting this money into a debt fund, uh, starting again, uh, putting 10,000 rupees as an SIP into a debt mutual fund, or she can do a recurring fixed deposit also. But I would still suggest debt fund because even a recurring fixed deposit, uh, she would have to pay 30% tax, uh, you know, being in the highest tax bracket. So I think a debt mutual fund would be a better option. And with the current interest rates high, uh, debt mutual funds would tend to give better return than the fixed deposit. So uh, that's that's another you know uh, I think these are the goals for for Mira, and yeah, I think so she works in a very comfortable position. Yeah, so very interesting. You know, uh, uh, this is a typical uh, young lady who has just got married, and uh, it's very interesting that if you apply very simple common sense rules in understanding and picking up. Uh, products that you need to invest in or take up, uh, how you can really manage your life goals. That's, that's, that's a very interesting insight. Um, I'm also being uh, told by my team here that as we uh, are doing this hangout, we have been joined live with uh, by more than 150 people who are watching this uh, broadcast live uh, on the internet through YouTube across India. So thanks everyone for joining us and I hope everybody is enjoying this. Uh, webinar. Um, time now to go to our third and last case study and while we are doing the case study, I also want to go back to individuals who sent in the solutions uh, to closely map their solutions back to uh, what, what our experts are saying here. Uh, so let's, let's move on to the next case study. Yeah, uh, so this is uh, the third and the last case study in our series. Yeah, so, uh, so again, a, a typical uh, Indian woman, 32 year old, she is a mother of a two year old son, stays with the family in Delhi. Uh, she's the head of HR uh, for North and West region, uh, you know, and, and again, a very interesting profile of a corporate working mother. Uh, I, I'm sure a lot of our uh, participants here on this Hangout are, uh, belong to that category of corporate working mothers. Uh, very interesting category from our perspective as well. How should she look at uh, planning her finances? Yeah. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, this is uh, becoming more and more important because nowadays more and more women, uh, working mothers are starting the second career, you know, uh, so to say. And uh, they are joining the work stream uh, again after a brief period, which is uh, this case here. Again, uh, she is earning a quite a very handsome amount uh, per month, 85,000, uh, of which 30,000 she's able to save, you know, uh, in spite of her expenses on kids and uh, uh, she's also having a house loan. So she has already created an asset for herself, which is going to be really help her. One smart thing which she has already done is taking a life insurance at an early age. You know, as you can see, she has she has been, she's insured 40 lakhs amount for the last five years, which is, which is amazing, you know. Uh, so she has taken this life insurance at an early age and hence she has logged in the premium uh, at a very low amount. Now if we see, uh, if we have a look on her on goals, she wants to start her own organization. She uh, aspires to have, uh, have her own, uh, she aspires to become an entrepreneur. Then uh, she needs to plan for her kids education which is again very important and because she has two kids, uh, the expense is going to be very high. Uh, and she also aspired to have another house. She already has a house, but she want to may have a, another house or a holiday home, you know, at a later age. And then she want to plan for retirement also, which is again very critical as mentioned by Prerna in her presentation, uh, that many people, when they are particularly in 30s or 25, don't plan for their retirement or don't take the retirement seriously. So th in this case, we need to definitely look in. So now if we go to the solution here, uh, which is in the next slide, yeah. Now she already has a 40 lakh rupees insurance. Now, see, insurance is not a one-time activity which many people unfortunately think. It's a it's a periodic activity. As your income grows, as your expenses grows, and as your aspirations grows, your life cover also needs to be updated from time to time. So though she started early with her insurance of 40 lakh, she need to now review it 
and she need to upgrade it to a higher amount simply for the reason because she has two dependent children you know or two kids to take care of so and if you see her current income which is 85,000 rupees uh, again going by the logic of around 10 time insurance so you know 10 time cover she already has a 40 lakh cover and she can go for a 50 lakh cover uh, additional uh, that that will be really helpful so then her life insurance is updated she has a 90 lakh cover uh, and again the premium is 7,000 to 8,000 uh, one just thing I want to talk about now in all the three case studies we have seen these are all modern women and uh, you know uh, they, they have access to internet they are on Facebook Twitter and the thing so they can also look for something called so online term insurance which are nowadays offered by many insurance companies you know that can be very uh, cheaper option for them and can be very smart option smart option for them uh, why the companies are offering online term insurance to them because they are very smart they are very health conscious uh, so that is why they they get a very preferential rate you know so this is, can be one option now going to second option which is child education uh, the horizon is very long here as you can see 16 years corpus required would be 28 lakhs now this 28 lakhs is after 16 years you know so so with inf with, with inflation taking into account now she can take risk good amount of risk with her uh, investment uh, on this goal so she can earn a conservative rate of 12 percent on equity all this while we have not registered any equity investment or you know this is the investment wherein she can take full amount of good amount of risk and because it's a 16 year horizon uh, equity you can make very good amount of money if you see the last 20 years return of equity equities has given around 20 percent plus return you know in various mutual funds and the ch chances of losing capital is very very low uh, in, in this long term horizon and the way inflation, education inflation as we are seeing in many metros, uh, it's going above around 9 to 10 percent, you know, for child's education. So it is imperative for, uh, for a woman or anybody to plan for the children's education much earlier and take some amount of risk so that they're able to beat inflation in the, in the long term. So that is why, uh, so she needs to have uh, this in place. And if you see the amount, uh, it is yeah the amount she needs to put in is around 5000 rupees which is very affordable and earning a conservative rate of 12 percent i think she can meet 12, uh, 28 lakhs in 16 years time then one uh, one thing which prerna also mentioned is about contingency planning you know which many of us don't do it is basically to plan for your emergency requirements and now we are seeing that in, in another three or four years time she plans to start her own business once she has her own business the cash flows will be very erratic so she, she may get good business in the short term, she may not get good business. So she need to plan for a contingency uh, things, you know, of around 1,20,000. This again we have said considering around what expenses, you know. So she is currently having 50,000 expenses. So we just need to have around three months to six months, you know, somewhere between. So if she can plan, uh, keep this 10,000 rupees aside again in a liquid kind of a fund, which is currently earning around 8.5%, 9%, she can plan for a contingency requirement. So they will have, she will have no tension, you know, I mean, because right now she's working, she's getting this 85,000 current cash flow, but that may not happen when she, you know, has her own business. And the last goal, which is having her own business, uh, the time horizon is four years. She would require somewhere around 8 lakh rupees to start her own business, start her own HR company. And again, we have a decent time horizon wherein we can put in a kind of a MIP mutual fund, which is again 80% uh, debt and 20% equity. Uh, which will fetch her nine percent, and for that she needs to start saving fourteen thousand rupees per month to meet that goal. So when you dis when you have such goals in place, and when you start doing individual investment to meet those goals, uh, this becomes really handy. And you know that you will not touch this amount, you know, uh, for any other purpose. So you are very focused. You become very disciplined, and that helps you, you know, uh, achieve your goals uh, whenever it, it happens. Thanks, Gajendra, for that for that excellent excellent analysis of these cases, and I'm sure that a lot of our uh, participants uh, who are watching this live or will watch this in future uh, <coughs> will find this very interesting in terms of uh, how should they look at uh, looking look at life goals and then go about planning for them.